Imagine a 60-year-old man, full of life, suddenly facing a devastating blow. A fall off a UPS truck, a strike to the head, left him grappling with persistent concussion symptoms. Initially, he was treated for the immediate effects of the concussion, but over time, his condition worsened. He experienced slurred speech, he was tearful and withdrawn, and he was consumed by fear. He was a shadow of his former self. Doctors, unfortunately, told him there was little more they could do, leaving him feeling hopeless and lost. When he came to our clinic, he was a man desperate for answers. We discussed the possibility of utilizing laser therapy to deliver light across the skull to the outer cortex of his brain, a treatment we had been exploring for concussion and traumatic brain injury based on previous physician protocols. He decided to try it, and the results were astonishing. After just one treatment, his speech became clearer, his demeanor brighter. The emotional release was overwhelming. He was so moved by his improvement that he brought the entire clinic staff to tears. In just that one session, he went from feeling lost and forgotten to having a glimmer of hope that had been missing for far too long. Now, it's stories like these that I have become accustomed to. But before my own personal transformation away from skepticism, I honestly would not have believed that light therapy could deliver such a powerful result. This was a defining moment for me. It made me realize that the potential for light therapy was far greater than I ever thought possible. Light can literally change the way our cells work. And with scientific advancements, we now have the power to harness light in a way that we can directly affect cellular processes, giving us a tool to be able to combat some of the most pressing health conditions of today. Now, this story of transformation isn't just an isolated incident. People are slowly waking up to the power of light. Right here in Cambridge, at Harvard's photobiomodulation lab, brilliant scientists are making groundbreaking discoveries on the effect of light on brain tissue, especially in psychiatric and neurologic disorders. They're pushing the boundaries of what we thought was possible, elucidating the potential for light to heal and restore brain tissue. Now, light therapy, known as photobiomodulation, goes far beyond the brain. In a variety of conditions like musculoskeletal disorders, dementia, depression, anxiety, PTSD, autoimmune disease, recovery from chemotherapy, and even improvements in fertility, the applications for photobiomodulation are vast, and we're just beginning to scratch the surface of what is possible. This field is poised to transform the way we think about healing and wellness. Now, what exactly is the science of photobiomodulation? Simply put, it's the study of using light to stimulate biological processes in animal cells. So for our species, think of it as photosynthesis for humans. Just like plants utilize the sunlight to create energy, we can harness certain wavelengths of light to create energy and stimulate other processes. The very word photobiomodulation tells us exactly what's happening. We're modulating or manipulating biological tissues utilizing light. And we can deliver this with low intensity devices such as LEDs, or we can deliver it with high powered lasers depending on the intended target, depth of tissue penetration, and the desired effect. Now, Dr. Bueller has research that beautifully shows that certain types of skin repair cells, when they are put in the presence of pulsed infrared light can see or sense that light 
and stimulate the cells, and then they can almost be seen dancing under the microscope in a Petri dish. So if we look at the history of photobiomodulation, in the 1990s, NASA discovered that the astronauts on the space shuttle that were exposed to experimental red light and plant experiments healed their wounds faster. It was that dance party you just saw that was happening in those wounds that was creating that healing effect. <clears throat> now let's go a little bit deeper. Our cells contain specific receptors like tiny antennas that can receive certain frequencies and, and wavelengths of light. Red light and infrared light, some of the most studied wavelengths in photobiomodulation, actually are received by a receptor in our mitochondrial walls. Now the mitochondria are these tiny little organelles that live in all of our cells and they're considered the powerhouses or those engines of the cell. And when you stimulate those guys, then they start producing more and more ATP. That's the gasoline or the fuel of the cell. But that's not it. It also changes the expression of genes and tells the cell things like stay healthy, work more efficiently, or even don't die. It acts almost as <coughs> the conductor guiding the orchestra of cellular processes. Another really exciting area of research is green light therapy. Green light has already been shown to have dramatic effects in conditions such as fibromyalgia and migraines. Currently, the US Army is funding research at the University of Arizona looking at green light in post-operative patients to decrease the use of pain medications. Now, why would that work? Well, our eyes, our retinas, contain receptors that can take in green light. It stimulates a part of the brain that can then trigger the release of endorphins or our own body's natural painkillers. Now, green light's also absorbed in hemoglobin, a protein in our red blood cells, and that can hypercharge those cells to carry more oxygen and deliver oxygen better to our tissues. And finally, on the green light front, green light also has antiviral and antibacterial properties, and it may be a great tool in the fight against infectious disease. Let's talk future. A future where the strain, the challenges on global health are becoming much more urgent. A study supported by the World Health Organization found that the amount of people living with dementia will nearly triple by the year 2050 to a staggering 153 million. It's 153 million people living with memory loss, cognitive decline, loss of independence. That's just the tip of the iceberg. Other chronic diseases, diabetes, obesity, heart disease, peripheral vascular disease, autoimmune disorders, all on the rise. What about the silent epidemic of mental health disorders? Depression, anxiety, PTSD affect millions more, casting a long shadow on individuals, families, communities. These aren't just numbers, these are real people and real lives. So what connects these seemingly disparate conditions I just mentioned? What's the common thread weaving in this tapestry of, uh, uh, this tapestry of suffering? Clearly, things point to inflammation, okay? Chronic inflammation simmering beneath the surface is the key driver to the development of almost every chronic disease that you can mention. It is something that can completely go awry, and when those processes of inflammation are left unchecked, okay, it can wreak havoc on the body. And so, when we think about d other diseases, Alzheimer's disease, the plaques and tangles, inflammation, COVID and post-COVID, you guessed it, inflammation, vascular disease, inflammation, autoimmune disorders, inflammation, mental health disorders, 
increasingly we're finding inflammation is a culprit, even in depression and other psychiatric disorders. So you know what the good news is? We know what the culprit is. So if we know what the culprit is, what can we do about it? How can we intervene in a way that's both safe and effective outside of the traditional changing lifestyle and doing lifestyle interventions? That is where the power of photobiomodulation <clears throat> truly comes into play. Why? Photobiomodulation can turn down the thermostat on inflammation by a whole host of processes. It's like changing and setting the reset button on inflammation, guiding the body back towards healing and wellness. Now let's talk about a few conditions where light can be of benefit. In the brain, this is an obvious target of light therapy. Our brain cells contain 1,000 to 2,000 mitochondria apiece. You stimulate these things with light, you restore mitochondrial function, you can increase the number of mitochondria, it improves blood flow to very important parts of the brain, especially in the frontal lobe, which is associated with cognition. It improves lymphatic drainage. The lymph system is like the sewage system of a city. It allows us to throw out the trash. And what's really exciting about it is it can create something called synaptogenesis, which is the reconnection of neural cells, of your brain cells. And so in things like Alzheimer's disease, where it's loss of brain cells and loss of those connections, you can see why there's such an excitement behind it. In things like post-COVID syndrome, where the immune system has gone awry, where inflammation has taken over, studies have shown improvements in brain fog, in energy levels, and in cognition. A another biggie, osteoarthritis. In osteoarthritis, if you shine a laser, high power laser, you can improve blood flow, stimulate stem cells, repair tissues, and what do those studies show? Improvements in range of motion and improvements in pain levels. And so these examples demonstrate why this can be such a tool in the fight to address the growing burden of diseases. And you know what's really exciting? Is that the safety profile is incredible. In a world that is becoming more beholden to the overuse of pharmaceuticals that have a lot of side effects and risks, photobiomodulation stands as an alternative which is safe, effective, and may help us to bring down the use of medications. Now, one of my favorite quotes is, good doctors know how to prescribe medications, great doctors know how to get people off of medications. And so, as a practicing physician, for a long time, I truly believe in the power of these modalities to help us, but that's not it. Think about the tens of thousands of procedures that are done daily. Tens of millions of procedures that are done specifically for the end stage of inflammation-driven chronic diseases. I believe we can bend that upward trajectory curve and look at more sustainable approaches. And so I think everybody in this room would agree that sustainability and affordability are paramount to the future of our healthcare systems. And so if we think about things like photobiomodulation, we have the opportunity to democratize healthcare and bring it to more people, including underserviced communities, un un undeveloped countries, really allowing people to become CEOs of their own health. If we have to have that serious conversation that these low cost options are the way forward, okay, to bring true health equity on a global scale. So what I want to say is photobiomodulation is not meant to replace all necessary interventions, medications, and surgeries. It's meant to enhance them. 
it is something that can be seamlessly integrated into traditional medical practices alongside lifestyle interventions with other complementary therapies to give us a more holistic approach that is sustainable. We need to look at these options more carefully. So I am on this journey to try to push these ideas on photobiomodulation and help people to understand you know, how important it is to move forward. And I understand that some of you might be thinking, well, this sounds too good to be true. And it's okay to have questions. And I understand a healthy dose of skepticism because honestly, after all, we have been conditioned to believe that complex medical conditions absolutely require complex interventions, sometimes extremely expensive. And I can tell you, as a physician, I was right there, and I was the biggest skeptic of these technologies. But I will tell you, photobiomodulation is not some fleeting fad or trend. It's deeply rooted in science that shows efficacy and safety. We need to continue to push this idea of photobiomodulation and really harness its true potential. We need to elucidate the mechanisms better of photobiomodulation to develop better treatment protocols. Again, this is a journey which could not excite me any further, and I invite you to join me on this path. Why? Because we cannot do this in, in isolation. This has to be a joint effort. We need to educate ourselves. We need to push research initiatives. We need really to demand that we get this to, uh, to a wider level, not just in the medical community, but beyond. We can make a difference if we just open our minds to the possibility of what we can do together because the future of healthcare is not something that we should have happen to us. It's something that we should create together. And with photobiomodulation, we have the opportunity to create a future that is safe, affordable, accessible, and powered by the very essence of life itself, light. Thank you.